the final score. Fanestem doing nil, Wrexham 11. And Wrexham go through to the second round of the Butte Energy Cup, the Women's Welsh Cup. Before I go on, though, let's talk about Flannerstim, do we? Really lovely club. Superb welcome that they gave us. And, yeah, it, it was a really gritty performance by them. Uh, they, you know, there's a gulf between the Adran Premier and the North West uh, third tier. Um, and, yeah, that was evident. No point in pretending otherwise. But I thought Flanders Stimdwee's heart was terrific. They got very tired in the latter stages. There was constant pressure from Wrexham. Um, but their heads never dropped. They never folded. And although there was a flurry of late goals, you know, the fact of the matter is they restricted us to two goals in the first half. Um, th th it was impossible for them to work the ball through the pitch and get service to the strikers. But the way they defended their penalty area and the way that Lacey, their keeper, uh, protected her goal was admirable and it was a pleasure to have their hospitality and a pleasure to get down there and play a proper cup tie um i was really concerned driving down there it was going to be off there was yellow weather warning and drove through some terrific rain which had already passed over flannes dundry but their pitch was in magnificent condition considering the battering it had taken so again kudos to them and the game went ahead the well, what could have been a massive factor was there was a terrific wind blowing down the pitch. That's all just bit me. What was that for, man? <laughs> I think I struck the wrong part. That sounded bad. Ignore that. Um, yeah, basically they were uh, they they were kicking against the wind, Flanders Dundee in the first half and defended very gutsily because it was hard to get out of their penalty area. The second half, if I'm honest, the balance of the game didn't change all that much. But, yeah, they continue to dig in as Wrexham showed their quality on the ball. Slight little trip rotation, not massive changes really in the Wrexham team. Abby Iddendon and Rosie Hughes were kept on the bench. And we had a front two of Kyra Jones being supported by Ava Suckley. And the first half uh, felt a little bit like our season so far. Control of the game. Probably should have scored more goals. The opportunity started in the third minute. Gibbard putting in a corner. Her corners were constantly testing. Um, she managed to pick out Clark at the near post. And she drove a shot in. It was deflected back. Suckley got in. Probably should have scored really close range. But put it just wide of the right hand post. And three minutes later. There's another opportunity. Really nice snappy passing down the right hand side. Clark to Cairns. To Pritchard, she pulled it back to Cara Jones, who span fed in Suckley one on one with the keeper, and again she'll have been so annoyed with herself. Remember how at this stage last season she filled her boots against Pirelli, getting six goals. Well, on this occasion, one on one with Lacey, she drew Lacey out and then hit the post, the inside of the post, and it spanned back agonisingly. Lacey able to grab the loose ball, but she'll have been annoyed with herself not to have helped herself to a couple of goals there. The breakthrough came in the eleventh minute, and it was Cairns. Lofting a ball into the box, the defender at full stretch managed to head it partly away, but Amber Lightfoot at the far post met it. It was it was, it was a good chance, but it was a good confident finish as well on the half volley, a firm finish from about eight yards out to put Wrexham into the lead. And then there's Cara Jones again, who was really lively in these opening stages, dropping off from the front and spinning and, and causing issues. She turned her marker nicely, worked it wide, Lightfoot swept in a, a cross. I reckon it's a cross, but it's on target. And Lacey was really scrambling across and just managed to claw it round the post and behind for the corner. The die was cast by now. Wrexham completely in control of the ball. Clark, playing as a right-sided centre-back, is stepping up more and more, essentially playing on the right, more in midfield and getting up and, and supplying Pritchard's. Uh, Fuller is pulling the strings in the middle of the pitch. Cairns is floating around dangerously. And the two strikers are switching around, dropping off, looking for bits of space. There's space between the lines. But having said that, a big part, I thought, of what Flanders Stimdu did to keep that score down was that at this stage, their midfield had the legs to step out and meet Wrexham's players. So although they often had all their side behind the ball... They weren't all camped in the box. They had an active midfield that was trying to restrict space. And Wrexham were really having to work to pick their way through. 
that higher position for Clark nearly led to a goal and Fuller fed the ball out to her. She worked it inside to Cairns, who drove in a shot from the edge of the area. Again, Lee's able to save it, getting her thighs in the way of the ball and deflecting it away. And within a minute, another opportunity. This time, it's Cara Jones receiving the ball from Fuller turning really nicely and hitting a powerful shot from the edge of the box which just swerved away from goal and went just wide of the post but it's it's constant constant pressure now Clark again using that space feeding down the flank Jones peeling off to the right this time sweeping the ball in under the bar it evades the goalkeeper Hughes heads it away but only as far as Lightfoot it's very similar to that first goal Lightfoot gets good contact on it and it's a big shout that Savage has handled it um, I can't. I couldn't honestly tell you. I'm um, on the same side as the cameras, and we're the wrong side to see it. It strikes her. It's a big shout by the Wrexham players, so it may well have been a penalty, but the ref didn't give it. And a couple of minutes later, we're carving out another opportunity. This time, it's a, a strange one, a very strange one. Cairns feeding it in for Cara Jones in the right channel. She hits a shot which spins up over Suckley, who's desperately trying to reach it to deflect it in, but it looks like she's shielded the view of the ball from the keeper who can't get there and it's going to go in. It lands just inside the far post and the spin on the ball takes it wide. At the time, I thought it must have either hit the post or somehow a defender stuck a leg out, but looking back at the replays, no, it's... <laughs> It's a reverse of that weird goal we scored at Barnet a few years back um, where the ball hits the turf and spins in. This time, rather than the leg break, it was the googly. No, no, it was a leg break. Last time it was the googly. And, yeah, the ball hits the ground and spins the wrong way past the post. But we do get a second goal, 10 minutes before half-time. And, again, it's, it's a measure of Fuller's quality and intelligence. We've had a lot of long-range shots because the wind's so strong behind us, which has soared over the bar. We've also, by the way, had a lot of long switches to pitches. And poor Rebecca Pritchard spent most of the first half sprinting after lost causes because the wind was taking it away. Fuller starts to get some space in midfield. This is the point where Atlantis Tendry's midfield start to tire and they start dropping a bit too deep. And now they're sitting in front of the, the back four and it means we've got a lot of room in the middle of the pitch. And of course, like I said, Fuller is an intelligent player and she spots this and starts to take advantage of it and advance with the ball further, closer to goal. And she's got a good shot on her. Now, she's obviously been looking at these long shots that are going over and she decides to try and control her shot. She's had one sighter, which was a pretty straightforward save for the keeper, but you could see she was just trying to take something off it, just making sure she kept it low. So the wind can still take it, but it won't take it over the bar. In the 35th minute, she nails it. Gibbard feeds her, she strides forwards, and then from a good 25 yards, maybe more, strikes a fine shot, which loops into the top left corner. Unsavable, fantastic hit, and Wrexham are 2-0 up. Have more opportunities in the closing moments of the half. Uh, firstly, Suckley with a tremendous run, broke down the right, gets to the goal line, runs into the goal line, pulls the ball back. Cairn sits a shot, which is cleared off the line. It ricochets to Suckley, who's co 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 continued to run in and has what looks like a tap in, but well, it doesn't get the proper contact. Maybe a body shape not right because she's running across the line back into the goal mouth and she hits the bar from point blank range. Oh, I mean, I felt so sorry for her. She threw everything into this performance and she could have ended up filling her boots again and just couldn't force the ball into the net. Then Sharp, from distance, strikes a powerful ball in the box. Was it a shot? I think I suspect it was. It hits a defender, ricochets into the goal mouth, and again, it's poor old Suckley. Just can't judge the bounce right. It's looping weirdly, and the wind's doing strange things. She's one-on-one. -on -one. If she gets a proper touch on it, she's probably going to score. But as it spins and gets blown around, she just can't quite read it to get that touch, and it goes over her head. It added time. Again, Gibbard with a surge. Lovely one-two with Cara Jones. And it feeds it down the left channel. Cairns drives in a shot, which is saved. It comes back out to Suckley again. And she nails it from about 15 yards. Tremendous block by Matthews, who was superb at the heart of Lennon Stimdry's defence all match. Puts it behind for a corner. Um, second half starts with Karen Allen replacing Liv Fuller, which I, I hope, I don't haven't any confirmation. It's just a pre-planned thing to give them both a half. 
and Alan immediately makes an impact because she has now got this emptier defence and she loves driving forwards but she really is the fulcrum of a lot of our attacks now driving forwards from the centre of defence and getting deep into the enemy territory and laying the ball off intelligently and she's aided by Clark who steps up now into the midfield position where for me she, she looks more comfortable she had a good first half, Clark, feeding down the left hand, uh, the right hand side, but she's excellent in the second half, taking on that fuller role and constantly available, constantly moving the ball quickly. Really, the best we've seen of Nat Clark, and really showing what she can do when she's given an opportunity to make the play. Um, we start carving chances out pretty quickly. Allen feeding the ball forwards, and Suckley tries to lift the shot from a good 30 yards but it goes over it's now apparent that the wind being against us is not going to trouble us in fact if anything it helps us no more um over hit passes now and Pritchard again another player who has a superb second half she calls causes Ephraim the left back all sorts of problems surging past her and delivering cross after cross uh, ironically it's Suckley in that right hand side position that delivers the assist for the next goal surging down the right hand side pulling across in keeper can't get to it and Cairns is a pretty simple finish from six yards out 10 minutes into the second half as if being 3-0 down and knowing that you've got a long long game to come isn't enough on come Indon and Hughes replacing the front two Jones and Suckling Suckley's last act was to pull another powerful shot from 25 yards wide of the target and within a minute Wrexham have the fourth goal, a third goal. No, fourth goal. Um, it's good work down the left by Erin Lovett getting forwards, feeding it in for Idendon, who's one on one with the keeper. She drives it in. It's a good save by the keeper. Lacey getting her hands up to parry. It spins to the far post, and Pritchard does ever so well. Defenders look favourite to get there. She hurls herself in and gets her head to it and plants it in the top right corner. Tremendous work real desire from Pritchard and Wrexham have got another and there'll be another again coming soon afterwards as well three minutes later and it's a corner Gibbard's feeding it in short to Cairns who's about 15 yards out in the box she back heels it beautifully and Nat Clark drives in her first goal for Wrexham just like Fuller had scored her first a good strike from just inside the box um Phoebe Davis comes on then as well good to see her getting a few more minutes more will come from Phoebe though 66 minute Wrexham score another Pritchard sweeping the ball into the far post Lightfoot cushioning it back Cairns getting her second six yards box finish so she's now on a hat trick and she's oh she's unlucky not to get some she's denied by an offside flag look a correct offside flag and there's a few other near misses that I'll get to in a moment Pritchard then squaring it to Hughes Hughes Feeding another through ball for Idendon. And again, this is a real big, big chance. Draws the keeper. Half a goal to aim for. Hits the post. It was so frustrated, Idendon, looking for her first goal for Wrexham. Within a minute, we've got a goal, though. Another corner from Gibbard. Pulled back to the edge of the area. Allen's shot is blocked. And it spins kindly for Phoebe Davis. Not one of our regular goal scorers to slide the ball in from close range. Brilliance to see. You know, it's a shame that she's been out injured for the start of the season. But wow, it's great to see her get on the score sheet. 75th minute, there's another. It's Clark again prompting, finding Pritchard, who again surges down the right, drives it into the goal mouth, and Idendon is able to take a touch for driving her first goal in for the club. Well deserved after the bright start she's made for us. It's 9-0 cert soon afterwards. Clark feeding Indon down the right-hand side. She puts it in the middle. And there's Rosie Hughes. The ball's a bit behind her. But classic predatory Hughes. She takes a good first touch to just set herself. And then an instant chip from about eight yards out. It's not, you know, because she's so close, it's not like a, a really powerfully struck chip. It's beautifully judged to just dink it into the top corner. Lovely finish by Hughes. And... She gets her second goal of the season. There will be more to come, though. Because Cairns does really well in a, a lovely move after Hughes has done... Well, it's a lovely move. It started from the start. 
clearance by Wrexham. Hughes gets ahead to it and finds Indon, who does well to use her body strength to ease a player out of the way. She feeds it out wide on the right to Cairns, who bangs the ball neatly back into Hughes, who's followed the run to the edge of the D. Indon has followed her run into the box. Hughes plays a beautifully disguised pass, but Indon one-on-one. Maybe Indon is too well disguised because she doesn't control it properly. But Cairns is able to charge in off a reflection off the keeper and is offside as she looks to finish. Um, we get into the last 10 minutes, but by now, Flanderston, we are tired. Uh, and who can blame them? They're still defending bravely. Like I said, their heads never go down. And the goals, there are more goals to come later on, though. Lovely spin by Edendon on the right, then beats another player and drives in a powerful shot. Lacey does well to save it with her legs. She does well in the last 10 minutes, Lacey, just to make sure it doesn't really get even more out of hand. There's some good stops. Another stop soon afterwards. Davis finding Hughes, who drills in a 25 yard that's heading for the bottom right corner. Lacey does well to get across and get a foot to his and poke it around the post. Then... It's Clark with a free kick, squares it to light foot. She does in a good, powerful 25-yard strike with a right foot. And again, it's Lacey getting across to save it. But in the closing moments, she can do nothing about the two more goals. 88th minute, corner from Gibbard, goes across to the far post. Allen heads it. It hits Phoebe Davis in the goal mouth and drops loose to Clark. She drills in a shot, it's blocked, and it dribbles kindly to Hughes for a close-range finish. And then after Hughes gets two off the bench, Inden gets a second off the bench in added time. Clark doing really well, winning a tackle. Gibbard feeding in the through ball. Inden finishing it confidently. 11-0 to Wrexham. And an excellent, excellent workout and confidence boost after a frustrating start of the season. I mean, looking at the performances, I would have to watch this back to know for sure. And I'm not going to. But Del Morgan in her first appearance season, I think, touched the ball with her hands once. So she had, she, she had nothing to do, genuinely nothing to do. The back three were strong, didn't have to do any real defending, but coming forward, stepping into midfield, Sharp did a good job. Um, also, like I said, Clark, who was outstanding in the second half, is stepping up the pitch and, and causing all sorts of problems and scores a goal. Uh, love it on the left-hand side. It's a bit more conservative in their forwards movement, but still makes their contributions and defends well. Um, the wing-backs, yeah, Pritchard's, Excellent, especially in the second half. Cause all sorts of issues. Lightfoot opens the scoring and is a constant threat as well. In midfield, again, Cairns, as ever, really covering loads and loads of ground and looking to create all the time. She gets two goals. She's really lucky not to get a hat-trick. Uh, I enjoy watching Brooke Cairns play. And, yeah, it was, it was a nice performance, finding good balls into channels and working things well. Uh, Fuller had a, an excellent first half, controlling matters in the middle of midfield. Uh, and so it was, you know, it was, it was nice to see Fuller playing with that that typical level of control, winning the ball well when it was coming back out, and and really sort of controlling our domination of possession. And then Maddie Gibbard is always going to give you just hard running, hard running. Her corners were very good. Her link up play was very good. Up front, Cara Jones. Surprisingly, she didn't get a goal. We had the, the front two start don't score. Um, Cara Jones was very, very lively in the opening stages, constantly t looking to spin, turn def defenders, beat defenders, get shots off, get killer passes off. Um, and Suckley was just so unlucky in front of goal. <laughs> I mean, looking heck, I felt so sorry for her. Uh, just couldn't find that net, but she was dropping off again and linking play well. She, as always, was constantly looking to work the keeper. It was exactly the right approach in the wind as well. Um, and was on another day, could have scored four or five. Off the bench, of course, great performances. Brilliant to see Phoebe Davis score the goal, and she was joining in in attacks as well. Who knows that Karen Allen Heller that hit her, which led to a goal in the end, could have fallen for her, and she'd have been on a hat trick. That would have been cool. Allen was excellent, stepping up into mid in midfield constantly and driving the play, as she always does. And as she always does, she got battered as a consequence of it, getting fouled all the time in midfield, but you know, she seems to relish that. Indon's quality is always apparent, and she may not have full confidence yet in front of goal, but she scores two. Could have scored more. Rosie Hughes, quality. She did this interesting thing where often she'd just drift super wide on the right and we put them under pressure, which clearly was just looking to mess with Lana Stimby's defence's heads to some extent. You could see sometimes Savage left-sided centre-back or the good game thinking, do I go all the way out there to mark her? 
surely I don't. But it just caused that little confusion because she would then make undetected runs into the box. It was a fascinating uh, move to, to just disrupt their defensive uh, organisation. And she was great, Hughes. I mean, the two goals she took well, especially the first one. Uh, great performance. And a great performance all round. It was great fun. I mean, we were always going to win it, to be fair. Um, but... We did very well in just making sure we did cash in and get lots of confidence boosting passing rhythms going and finishing going. Um, and hats off to Helen Stingley, who we all wish well for the rest of the season. Lovely club. Good, really good people. They're looking for help because they're, they're relocating to a different pitch and they're going through the process of trying to get grants out of the Welsh FA. So I don't just wish them well for the season. I wish them well as well in terms of their fundraising. Uh, they were very pleased with the fundraising on the day. It was chatting to a lot of people at the club. And, well, they were charging £3 admission, and they said they'd made about £600 um, just from gate money. And looking at it, at, at the time, I thought, oh, that means there's about 200 people here. I didn't think there was. But looking at the footage afterwards, there was a lot of people on my side of the picture I couldn't see. Um, so brilliant. I mean, that's a crowd. That's a proper crowd for a uh, first round Butte Energy Cup tie. And brilliant. Delighted we've contributed in that way and uh, wish them all the best on and off the pitch in the future. But that was a good good experience the Wrexham team that had, been, had a frustrating start to the season let's see if we can now carry that on against Cardiff Met on Sunday a game I'd encourage you to attend because we feel like we're going to hit our stride in front of goal and, and wallop somebody and uh, he knows hopefully it's next Sunday with a final score of Stimdery 0 Wrexham 11 I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC